Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I would like to talk about the background of my desktop and we've seen this before a couple times briefly in one of my other videos. This is the Belevi Mausoleum in Turkey and I've been inspired to make this video by Charles Koss's video and a couple other researchers videos. I'm going to give links in the description for their stuff along with the photo galleries where I found some additional photos of this site that I did not know about previously. So just a real quick recap from last time. This site is a bedrock outcrop that has been worked and clad in blocks to make a tomb allegedly and it was allegedly three stories tall. I'll show you some illustrations in a minute. Some other illustrations, better illustrations. But there's also a tumulus, an earthen mound, and some interesting bedrock carvings and subterranean chambers. And in reference to Charles Koss's video, this was the angle that really struck me when I first saw this site because this is the last remaining section of these blocks in this condition. Most of the blocks have been stripped from this site, uh, although they also say the site was never completed. So you guys make up your own minds. But I believe all this sedimentation here on the right hid these blocks from the scavengers. They didn't want to dig down any deeper to get these out, and thus they were saved from pillaging. And then in recent times, it's been excavated, and a nice little retaining wall has been made. So these blocks are the nub blocks, as Charles Koss talks about in his video. I also can classify these as my bevel blocks, like I talk about in my series. You can see, we'll zoom in, these blocks have a margin around them, this inch or two of material that is raised and much more finely dressed than the interior pitted surfaces here. But you'll also notice on the block next to it, this one seems to be a little bit different. The pitted surface has it is risen. There's actually an extra bit of pitted surface above. So was this a mistake, an extra, an over pouring of the geopolymer for the geopolymer people? Was this um, a, a sloppy application of their matter man manipulation technology or stone manipulation technology, whatever that was? Fellow YouTuber and researcher Wise Up over at Wise Up channel has a segment of one of his recent videos that he devotes to this site and this wall specifically. And he has some things to say about the joints between these flared base pieces. And I'd like to point out that we see these flared base pieces at several temples. Garni Temple in Armenia is one, and that temple has nubs on the columns. So think about that as a cross connection. But Wise Up mentions that these seams also ooze out, like the block above here has seems like it oozes out, almost as though mortar was applied in between and it was too much and they pushed and it oozed out. Or if this is geopolymer, then they have placed the blocks when they are wet and maybe the pressure from the blocks above, you could say, oozed out some of the material through the seams. You can describe that a few different ways, and I'm not entirely sure what I'm seeing here and how to describe the physical evidence. I think Wise Up makes good points. There are sections that it oozes out. It shouldn't, if these are just carved blocks, this extra little bit should not be there, and it's on several of the seams, and it's the same material, the same stone as the blocks. Yes, there's discoloration. But from what I can tell, these blocks are the same material all the way through. So why do, they, why do they do this? Why do they have these little joints or seams where it looks like they were melted together? And then, of course, the lower nubs on the flared base pieces. And then I think a few below in these other processed blocks as well. These have like a, a stepped profile. It's a little bit different than the other courses. And I do want to point out the trim detail that 
is very ornate and very precisely done. We're going to look at more of that later. I think there are sections where it just stops and it's smooth as if, like they say, it was unfinished. But wouldn't these detail pieces be finished before the blocks were placed? Maybe not. Open to both chronologies. So yes, if you watch Charles Koss's videos on the Piranesi book, then you should see the obvious connection between the illustrations in that book and this real-life architecture here in Turkey. So maybe you're thinking, well, these nubs are the lifting bosses for the blocks, and on the finished structure, when they were done, they were going to go back and finish off all the surfaces and knock off all the, the nubs. Okay, well then why did Piranesi show ruined illustrations in his book that have nubs on them as well? And why do we see the nubs in all sorts of structures from Asia to South America? I mean, this isn't a regional thing. This is a global thing. That the processing marks, these these uh, surface treatments on the blocks, these these are a regional styling. We see, like we call this one the uh, inverted bevel block because the one we see more prevalent is the reverse of this, where the edges have been beveled back and the centers are raised. It's, it makes an interesting profile. It almost looks like there's mortar in between the blocks. There isn't. It's block against block, just like here. But here it's an inverted form where the, the, the margins are raised and the interiors are pitted. The Amphipolis in Greece, the purported tomb of Alexander the Great, this place, a very large tumulus with a wall around it. This wall has a very interesting surface treatment execution. We have the traditional, the usual bevel block design with the recessed margins and raised center portion. But then inside that we have a finely dressed raised perimeter and then a pitted recessed interior on that. So what would, what would, we, what would we classify these as? Double bevel blocks? But these blocks are really impressive too. They, you can see how deep they go. They probably had metal clamps holding them together. It's the traditional technique in a lot of our sites. Just these blocks are really impressive and they have a regional footprint. They seem to be all around the Mediterranean and a little bit into Europe and then a little bit into Asia, but not too far into Asia. And we don't really see these in South America at all. But we do see both the South American and the Asian blocks with nubs on them, just like these sites. For example, here in Jerusalem, where you can see a nub on a bevel block. So back to the mausoleum, I will give you the links to a couple of photo galleries. First one is on Facebook. I don't have a Facebook, and I'm able to look at these photos. Uh, so I don't think you guys should need a Facebook account to look at these either. Uh, the other place is lah.ru. I'm sure you guys have heard me talk about these guys. These are the Russian, Russian researchers, and these guys do a lot of good site investigations and have a lot of great footage. So they have some Belevi folders here. I need to note that the first gallery, I believe, comes from Maximus 101, and I can't seem to find the link to the specific gallery that I saw before. Uh, this site auto translates, so there might be a mistranslation uh, somewhere. But this guy has been here, been to this site, and he has taken some good photos. And those are the ones we're going to look at first. And before I forget, I'd like to mention Vlad 9 VT has a video on the Belevi Mausoleum. It's 36 minutes long. It has a lot of photos. I'm Probably all of them. He probably went and found every single one. That is his style. He finds every single photo. So if you guys just want uh, a nice slideshow video set to music, I recommend going and checking out Vlad's video. And actually, first, before we look at the photos, let's look at what they think it looked like. So first of all, I want to note that in the wiki, it says that the Belevi Mausoleum might have looked a lot like the Mausoleum at Halicarnassus. And that's what we're looking at here. And they don't really know what that looks like either because that site is a bunch of column fragments and that's pretty much it. Yeah, so this is what's left of the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. 
there's just a few column segments and some restacked rubble. Really almost nothing left of this thing. So here is a front view of what they think the levee used to look like. Uh, not sure how much of this was supposed to have been there if it was unfinished. There are pieces of sculpture from Belevi, at least it looks like from the same stone as Belevi. Uh, these little horse figures, but they're more like griffins. I'll show you those in a minute. And there are some column segments laying around the outcrop at Belevi. The chamber in the front, it seems very different in my desktop background. It seems to have a more pointed profile, right? This is more arched interior, where the diagram implies it was more square. But maybe it could have had a square door. But there's a lot of open material, open space here, missing material. So, it, and the way it's warped, the, the bedrock is kind of warped. I think I'm not sure how much of this, you know, how much was built on top of this, and how far do they get. Uh, it's very confusing, some of this stuff. It it really looks like the bedrock has been manipulated and processed, like I said before in the previous video. There are some really weird little perforations in some of these blocks, and we've seen that in some blocks at Delphi. I think those are interesting, and there's some interesting repeating square indentations, I think, on the inside, and we'll look at some other photos from the inside as well. But this piece of out... This, this piece of bedrock, this outcrop, is it's very strange. The way it's shaped, the way it's buckled or uplifted, like the top's been blown off, I'm not sure. Just speculation. And then here's a nice little illustration showing perhaps what it might have looked like up against a hill, right? And that would have saved the back side blocks from scavengers. The hill would have sedimented and filled in over time and lazy scavengers don't want to take the time to dig them out, I suppose, when they have blocks they could they could just pick off the front. Makes sense. So let's go ahead and go through the Maximus 101 album. This has some great angles and some good detail. Like I was talking about before, this trim on the base, it's very ornate, and the design, very unique. And we'll, we'll see it kind of echoed again in some of the capitals and other elements. Capitals are very ornate, very flowery. Reminds me of Baalbek. They're pretty perfect, if you ask me. Uh, very hard to do. The chamber again. The side that we looked at before. Bedrock that has been worked. This is very strange. It has the repeating scoop marks like you would see maybe at the Aswan quarry, but this is on a smaller scale, I believe. But I believe the same kind of thing is going on here. Other trim pieces. This is very interesting imagery. This It's a palm leaf, I suppose, but very stylized. Uh, this was the overhang for the top of the temple. You would look up and see this. And this would be the overhang that would protect you from the rain if you were huddled underneath the temple, the repeating circular nub motif, not really sure if these have a proper name or not, I apologize. Other interesting like spherical, like maybe these are vases, I'm not vases, I'm not sure. I have other pictures of these we'll look at in a minute. This is the main outcrop. You can see the modern road, how close it is to the site. Another angle of that bedrock carving. It's like sliced on both sides, like split like loaves of bread. Here's a shot from above. I think that's really amazing. This was probably also the bedrock here, the quarry here, was also being used on site for the monument. Maybe also taking this stone elsewhere, but it seems like this spot was picked for this stone to build the monument and the other structures around here. Corners are interesting on the bedrock. They've got these little cutouts. I'm assuming this is kind of like Legos. The corner pieces will lock into these little niches and make the structure more stable. A view from farther away with a lone column and capital and a field surrounded by some blocks. And then there's this wall. Uh, part of it is a retaining wall. Part of it, I believe, it just runs down the hill. And we'll look at other 
angles of it in a minute. Very tightly fitted megalithic wall. Another corner shot. See how much of the bedrock there is. This is the cleft over here, the opening. Another angle. These lower flared pieces are still intact. You see the little nubs. There seems to be a pair on each segment. Looking the other direction, another block with a nub on it, and then some more nubbed flared pieces below. And now we're getting into the interior of that niche, that little chamber in the middle of the bedrock. And you can see how the floor tiles have been very tightly fitted and nice fine finish on the top. You can see how there's a margin again, a finely dressed margin, and then a kind of a pitted surface underneath. Very interesting how that how they did that. And then you see some other bits, little chiseled out bits, I want to say. It, it looks like maybe where the clamps held some of these blocks together, like keystone pieces, perhaps. And then this is a different area. This is under the tumulus now. We are under that big earthen mound I showed earlier. Now, these chambers are very well carved. And when it opens up, you'll see some very interesting architecture. So now we're inside of this chamber. Now this, I believe, is a vent or an, some kind of ventilation tube. This goes up and out the top. And you can see all these very dark stones piled in here. Very interesting. And then this is something I wanted to point out to Charles Koss. Charles, you mentioned star shafts at, at um, Baalbek and that your pyramid in Italy might have star shafts. Well, the only other place I've ever seen that have some kind of shaft cut into them that resemble the star shafts are these. Now, this has been done the hard way, I say. They've, they've carved a little bit out of each block to create this. The, the top is a squared off profile. The, the majority is a rounded profile, like two different drill bits or two different chiseling methods being used at the same time. Very interesting. And then how about this angle? Very interesting stones, very precise, very megalithic. Some interesting coloration, discoloration on them. The ceiling slabs, very precisely fitted. This looks like a piece that has fractured and broken away, but I'm sure originally it was very nice looking and very, I mean, this almost looks like a miniature version of the King's Chamber ceiling, doesn't it? Everybody? Charles? Anybody? And then these angles here are very interesting. Again, like I was talking about Indian temple ceilings where they have these rectangular blocks that they make into squares and then they alternate side to angles so that they stack up and make this interesting intersection. Very precise again. And then another angle of that doorway, a little brighter. Very interesting discoloration. Was this the door? Not sure what's going on with that block. And then here's another area. It looks like people have been using this to maybe burn things. There's paper in here and a lot of dark, maybe sooty deposits on the blocks. Here as well, it looks like there's some soot on the ceiling and maybe just some dirt on the walls from people climbing in and out of this thing. And then another angle where it looks like some rougher construction, but still the seams are very precise and tightly fitted. And here we are inside of that chamber again, the bedrock and person for scale. And you can see some of the blocks left. It looks like the entire inside was clad in these blocks, these same blocks as the floor. It looks like there might have been a rounded arched top to this, maybe kind of like a barrel vaulted ceiling. I'm not sure, but then why would it have more space above? all that open space above that goes up to a point. It's very interesting. I'm not sure what you can't, you know, it's really hard to tell what the original configuration of this inner chamber was. And then this is another one of the openings, I believe, into those lower tunnels that we were just looking at. And this, we need to pause and talk about this for a second. And I have a bigger photo that we're going to look at. Okay, so I've downloaded this photo so we can zoom in a little bit. And this is a very interesting area of the site. Now, 
look what's going on here. The bedrock has been carved away to make this little trench or channel roadway around it's circular around this mound. I guess this is one of the tumuli. Now we have these retaining wall blocks here and look at their profile. Very interesting shape. They have a rounded front profile and very tight joints. This is a very unique style that I've only seen one other place, which I will show you now. This is Preen in Greece. We have looked at this wall before early on in the series, my bevel block series. I wasn't really sure how to include these blocks in that uh, classification because they, they don't really fit. They're not technically bevel blocks unless you're looking at a corner here where, yes, there is like a beveled corner line, which we have seen that before as well. But the profile, the front profile of these blocks is rounded, and I couldn't really, I couldn't really, uh, you know, find any other examples of this any at any other ancient sites where they've used this this kind of swelling block facade motif. I'm not even sure how you describe this. Is there a is there a name for this? And then this border course that sticks out a little bit more, and it's a thinner course than the others. So it's very it's a very well put together wall. Uh, they planned it out. It's a very unique style. This version is a little bit smaller actually than what we just looked at. These blocks, you can see these people for scale. You can actually see what they're pointing at. See there's a, a defined line that goes around the edge of these blocks and there's a different surface treatment. This, this more refined, smoother, a little bit maybe recessed or in some instances maybe raised margin or edge. And then there's an interior pitted or rougher surfaced region of the blocks. It's very interesting how that is achieved. And just so people don't forget, Preen has a stadium or a set of stairs with nubs at the bottom. How about that? And what do you see again? What is this? What are these bits? Is this what we, we just looked at uh, at Belevi? Is this more uh, oozing stone at the joints of blocks? I'm not sure how to explain this again. And oh look, while we're here, a uh, very nice trim, just like at the levee. And there is one more little, oh, two more little nubs. So I'm assuming these go all the way around on these lower courses. And when you look into the upper courses, where do they go? You don't see any more of the nubs. Why is that? Is that because they are a decoration down here? Lifting, why would you need the lifting nubs at the bottom? and not at the top. If you removed them from the top, why not the bottom? I just need a little consistency in my life, that's all. So back to this photo, these are huge. These, I'm assuming a person is probably up to the top of here, or maybe a little bit below. It'd be nice if we had a person for scale, but we don't. But assuming someone can walk through here, or a couple, two or three people abreast can walk through here, I'm assuming these are at least shoulder height, or maybe even up to overhead height, so these are huge blocks, and they look like they could have been column segments stacked back together, but that's just one possibility. I think it's just this is one of their techniques, one of their methods, one of their uh, executions, uh, just like the preen wall. It's one of their uh, decorative styles of making a wall. But let's just let's think about something for a minute. You know, this is a, a huge piece of bedrock that's missing here. So this more than likely was used for the retaining wall and maybe also for some of those in, interior uh, chambers and tunnels and the ceilings and all those blocks. They had to come from somewhere. Maybe it was all just done right here. That's why they chose it, chose for it to butt up against a bedrock, a good piece of bedrock. We've seen that before at uh, the Temple of Adonis. They're, they have weird uh, bedrock formations that they like to uh, sit their temples up next to and utilize. Here's another angle of the wall. You can see it goes on for a good bit. Uh, I'm assuming these retaining wall blocks go all the way around. And another angle of the front again. Look up. Now this is what I mentioned before. There's like faint traces of little square things. I'm not sure what's going on there. Are those indentations? Are those imprints of wood? It, it, could it be uh, burn marks 
scorch marks. I'm not sure. All kinds of possibilities there, I guess. And then some more of the fluted columns that are just laying around. They're very nicely done. And the square pegs to fit them together. That's pretty standard. And then we're back to the beginning again. Okay, so now we're going to look at the LAH albums. And there are three of them. And there's over 100 photos here, guys. So I'm going to go a little faster now. I don't want to keep you all all day. But I did notice a few interesting connections. And I need to point them out to you. And I think some of you all will be surprised. And some of you, some other of you will not be surprised. But let's begin. Okay, so please look at, look at these on your own if uh, you want to take more time looking at them. I can't zoom, but maybe you can look at them better on your computer or download them yourself and zoom. Uh, but we're going to go as they show us, which is kind of haphazard order, but we'll take each photo as it comes. So we're looking at the wall right now, and it looks like there's more of it than what I thought before. It's a lot taller, and it appears that for the most part, it's a finely dressed wall, but down, see around his knee, you'll see there's a faint margin. It's it's not quite a bevel, but it's a trace. It's a, it's a, a faint trace of a bevel. And I see this in South America sometimes in the Peruvian walls. Most of it is finely dressed. Maybe it has a convex surface treatment to it, so it kind of looks puffy. Everyone says they look puffy. But then every now and then you'll see a little hiccup in the block where there is a bevel line, a hard edge. It, most blocks don't have a hard margin that's beveled like that in South America, but every now and then in the Sacsayhuaman walls and in a few other sites, you will see every now and then a few blocks that'll have this. And I think that's a dead giveaway. The Osirion, the perimeter wall there as well, has the same thing going on. And then a lot taller section here, so it is, it's fairly substantial construction here. And I don't see any nubs in any of these points, so I mean, they got these up without nubs, I assume, unless they've knocked them off. But And then other parts of this tumulus, maybe this is the part where the air shaft comes out. You all have an article to read to there. I'm, I'll read through it myself. I haven't yet. Um, so, yeah, this looks like the channel that was cut in the bedrock over here. And you can see the tunnels going in. Maybe we'll have someone look at the uh, archaeoastronomy for me. Uh, I'm not too good with that, but I am working on that. Uh, maybe they can give us some insights there. Uh, side view of the interior. Again, there's that vertical air shaft, we'll call that, going out. The little rougher uh, entryway, but then into the more refined chambers. Very interesting. More blocks. I believe this might even be a small filler stone at a corner here, which is a repeating hallmark all over the world even on easter island part of one of the platform walls has the small filler stone at a corner more more blocks very nice very nice fitment aha again see see this hard margin down here there's not many instances of that but when it happens it's really obvious see for the most part there isn't any hard margin. They swell a little bit, but there is no hard margin line. So there, it's, it's almost like when it does occur, it's an accident or a hiccup. Very nice, very nice fitment. Yep. And then the trench. And the, these score marks or these lines, they really focus on this, which I'm really glad for. Uh, it does, I mean, it looks, it kind of reminds me of some places. I'll say Yangshan Quarry and maybe um, Aswan Quarry, perhaps some other places. I, I can't really tell. More here of these swelling blocks. You can see how they pinch in the vertical and horizontal planes with a hard margin line every now and then. And that's interesting. Does that, does that mean that they basically fuse together? Or does this imply one whole block here? That's very interesting. The LAH guys are very good at finding the best parts of these sites, the most anomalous parts. Very big blocks. And 
and then the entrance, I think, or at least one of the entrances into this thing. There we go. Interesting basin, maybe. And then back in this tunnel, and they focus on this hole as well. You can see it's got two different profiles. It goes between two blocks. That's very interesting. Very interesting. Some broken pieces. They are really thorough, the LAH guys. They will look for every little bit. And you'll have to excuse my snoring dog. And then they, they notice the joinery as well. And I'll show you some examples. Uh, we can stop right here and look. Warangal Fort in India. There's the ceiling at Warangal. You can see they use square shapes, edge to side to create this. It happens a few other places in India as well. It's very interesting that is it that it's at Balevi, but then I've also looked at Milas. Uh, you guys help me with that pronunciation, but this was under the Halicarnassus wiki as other examples. And then there's another example of this style of ceiling. Very interesting and very nice ornate capitals on these. And it is the style, uh, at least close to the style of that at Balevi. So moving on, yes, more of these impressive angles. And then there's an, an interesting margin line, very, very precise. That's interesting. It's kind of convex, like a cornice almost. That's an interesting connection for these blocks. Look how they're put together. See if you can find out where the seams are in these blocks. Interesting. Graffiti. These guys are always using rigs to get better footage. You see they did this in the Great Pyramid, and because of that, they're one of the only people to have color photos of the well shaft and grotto, and they are the latest of photographers to get photos from there. Interesting. Interesting. Look at this, a square hole at a corner, maybe. Very interesting polygonal block here. See that extra edge? We almost need to draw that in red, but very interesting. And then, of course, they're going to get out gauges and different measuring tools to show us the precision. Complex angles here, very interesting. Same as before. And this is an interesting block. You'll see it goes around the corner. That is like we see in Egypt and in Peru. Precision, joinery. And if you guys want to tell me something about one of these photos, you see something, just tell me their number down here. Just tell me what number it was, and I'll be able to find it, and we can discuss it. Complex angles there. And then we're outside back to the bedrock cuts. They go into this a little bit, look more at the grooves, how they go around corners. Narrow ones. Very interesting. This is a little rubble and mortar, maybe just rubble stack, dry stack wall. Wonder what's under that tree. Aha, more like saw cuts, interesting cuts. And then we're back to the beginning. And album number two. Overhead gives you orientation. Not north-south, off north-south. A southerly opening. I think that's the cleft there, yes. Very precise, very straight. And you can see they have dug out around the base now. A 
Very straight, very precise. Very precise. Fluted column segments. More of that trim detail. This was a lintel or part of some lintel. Interesting cuts. Very precise. You see the curved edge. More of this detail. They really focus on this and the curves of it and how perfect they all are. They have a nice little tool here that measures all the curves. A similar tool you would assume was used to make this and to check as the carver went along. Very nice. I love this shot. You can see how complex this one block is. Very nice. Is that a Fibonacci spiral? Probably. Very tight joinery. And that was on the, oh, let's go back. That was actually on the ground. That's the foundation. So that makes sense, just like in Egypt. And then, aha, this is what I pointed out. They pointed it out too. The detail stops. And look where it stops. It stops barely into one block. Was Does this mean that the carver was just going along? And it's, it's, that's very interesting. I don't, I don't know what to think about that. It's the first time I've seen that close of it. Very precise joinery. Impeccably tight joinery. It just, it just disappears. And then look how the blocks ooze out a little bit at the joints here. These are those lower step profile blocks. Shot of the interior. More of this again. They focused on these squares as well. So you can see a better angle of them. Very interesting, whatever those are, or whatever they're traces of. Aha, very, very precise score mark. And this part's interesting. I couldn't discern what this is. It looks like a track for some kind of sliding opening door. May I'm sure maybe the there has to be some similar explanation when you see it's on the ground. It has little what would those little uh, holes be for? Would those be for maybe some kind of ball bearing or uh, stone bearing? I'm not sure, but it would it could uh, go under a heavy door and help it open. I'm not. I don't know. That's a, but that is a very interesting cut, especially with the little extra holes in it. And then I'm not sure if this void underneath corresponds with that, or that's coincidence, or what that's about. It's interesting. I wish we could have seen the whole thing. If there was maybe more of this that continued, it makes sense. It's very interesting. Yeah, that, that's puzzling me. I, I assume it's the track for the door. Score marks and precision surface. More very uniform score marks. Interesting cuts and angles here. Interesting. Interesting texture on these lower portions here. Very precise. More of the same. More of the bedrock. More of the bedrock. What are you pointing at? Let's go back. Maybe that's just where they're going to be in the next photo. I'm not sure. This rippling, these rippling cuts, that reminds me of Aswan. These little shallow 
depressions in a row, perforations. Uh, that's probably where he was pointing to this hole. And uh, I believe they, yeah, I think they focus on some of these cuts and these angles in the rock. Yeah, they spend a couple photos looking at those. Very interesting. Well, we can look at them too and speculate. They're just, they're interesting how they're weathered, if that's weathering. They still have a hard edge to them, but it looks almost like they were water eroded. But you you wouldn't have the hard edges if that were the case. It's it's just, yeah, it's an interesting hole. I could see, I could see why they would focus on that. Interesting. Okay. More of the detail. They look at the mineralogy. They get real close. I guess there's high quartz content in the blocks. They go pick up blocks. They break off blocks. They look at the, maybe that would be the pristine finish of the structure versus what it looks like today. Lots of quartz, high quartz content. More blocks down here, foundation blocks perhaps. Then they focus on the trim again, and you can see at this spot, there's a little bit extra material there. Going around. And here you can see the nubs are not in the same position on every block. They're lower here, higher here. And this, this is where that trim ends again. And you can see from this angle, it, there's a, a line that goes all the way down, almost like a corrosion line, right where the trim stops. It's very interesting, right? Is that, that is the joint of the block we saw in the previous photo. It stops a little bit after the joint of that block. And yet, as the joint goes down, you get more of this extra material. So you get to the bottom where it spills over the side, it looks like, and oozes out. It's very interesting how that happens. And you guys can download that photo and zoom in on it, which I encourage you to do. And here's more of the ceiling. Aha, and clamps are confirmed. This is not a keystone shape. This is a bar style clamp, but clamps confirmed at the site. There's a foot. So, you know, this is the floor. And lastly, the third photo album, which is the shortest. And these are some bits lined up. Not all these sites might be Baletti proper. I believe, yeah, this is Ephesus. Yeah, this we looked at earlier as well. This wall in the back has lots of these damage holes. I'm going to say that is from where metal was scavenged out of these walls. And there's lots of bevel blocks and nubbed blocks and weird looking blocks, lipped blocks in the walls at Ephesus. So I'm going to say the same builders built both the levee and Ephesus, among maybe many other places. So we're back inside, tight joinery. This was just a random, I think, extra additional photos. So these probably aren't in any order. Interesting elongated nub there. We saw that before. More joinery. This is an interesting block here. See this? This is a lipped block. Extra material. It's not very defined in terms of if this was a, you know, a decorative trim. It would be more refined and defined. But that's just an, an, a lip of crude material, unworked material. It's very interesting. They would leave it like that and below it to very small residual or vestigial nubs. These are not going to lift anything. What are, These are just symbolic, esoteric, uh, a trace, an echo of something else, of technology being applied. Anyone's guess there. Very interesting stuff. And the same thing is happening down here on the trim. It seems like the same texture as these lips. Different margins, different widths too. Very interesting stuff. Aha, uh -huh. more of these blocks that swell. I might have seen this photo somewhere else on the internet, but I, I couldn't place it. I don't know exactly where this is. This might be in the area surrounding Ephesus. 
Oh, but let's go back. Was that? Yes, it was. A small filler stone at a corner. That's a hallmark. And these might even be polygonal. There might be an extra angle to some of this. Ah, uh, yeah, Ephesus again. Nubs at the bottom. Ah, uh, detail back at Balevi. Very interesting. This is that spot where the detail stops above. And like I said, it looks like it, like Charles Koss mentions, an, a melted or oozing material like those stairs in Egypt. What's going on there? It does look like a concrete that has oozed out and solidified, but not quite like concrete. The mineralogy of these stones are what they are. Is this some kind of high quartz concrete? No idea. This is very strange. Margin lines, multiple margin lines, and different surface treatments. This pitted surface treatment, a semi-finished and then very finished. More of this. We saw this before. Some duplicate photos. High quartz, and then they reference the Minkari casing stones at Egypt. That's very good connection. These are great to point out, especially these down at the funerary temple. Same kind of lipped blocks. They picked up on the connection too. Little residual nubs on it, and these are granite. So we have a quartzite concrete and a granite concrete. If that's what this is, or is this? stone manipulation technology or abilities that they can just move and manipulate these stones as if they were concrete. And I want to point out this, this was one of the last photos, but this, this one is one of the more important ones to point out because there's something very interesting going on with these blocks. So it's mostly finished. This is a finely dressed stone except for the nub and the nub is connected to the rest of this extra material. Now look how this steps. You see the step. We've talked about this a lot. The stepped motif. You see it above the Petra facades. You see it above South American Peruvian facades and doorways. The stepped motif is another decorative and maybe more than decorative hallmark that we can connect across continents. Now just looking at what this block is doing and what, what the processing is doing, it appears to be passing across it and finishing it. And somehow, for some reason, it has stopped here. And we have a little residual, residual nub down here. And this bit of material that is smooth and then another lip below. It reminds me of another place I've seen and we've talked about earlier. So we're going to jump over to that now. The Royal Kurgan of Kerch. And I talked about this in one of my comments to Charles Koss earlier. This is the same thing and it's very weird. And I picked up on it back then and now I'm convinced that this is more than just some weird phenomenon. This is, this is how they're working the stones. You see the blocks have these big bevels, these very, you know, very deep cuts and very high relief centers. And as it goes toward this niche in the middle, look what it does on both sides. The, they get shallower till they disappear and become smooth on both sides. And in some instances, they are just nubs. They just, they taper to, they like, they, they sputter out, sputtering out. It's all I can, it's the only way I can describe what I'm seeing. The, the, they, they either process this first and then work their way out and got cruder as they went or as they went in they got more refined and more precise till the end where it is perfectly smooth and what do you see here another stepped motif it's decorative but maybe more than decorative i don't know what else it implies but it's i'm seeing it everywhere so we'll finish up the gallery here but that's this is one of the more interesting photos i think that and the 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 trim detail stopping right at the edge of the block, but a little bit past it with that crazy oozing edge. And I just, I don't know what to think about some of this stuff. And this connection to the Royal Kurgan of Kerch, I just noticed that 
as I was filming and recording here. Very interesting blocks inside again. Really good joints. The, the, a lot of this stuff is, oh, there's that one that goes around the corner again. A lot of this is repeat photos now, I think. Yeah, different angles of that. Very precise. That again. Okay, well, that does it, guys. That's all the photos. I want to show you one more thing before we stop. So buildings that exist today that perhaps would have looked like the Baletti Mausoleum and the Tomb of Halicarnassus. We have the Shrine of Remembrance in Melbourne. And then we have the Masonic House, the Scottish Rite in Washington, D.C. So these are both very impressive buildings. I can definitely see a resemblance. But these are just blocks. There is no core, no bedrock core, obviously. And who knows if the top actually looked like this or it got to this level of finish. Lastly, some of the art. You see this griffin figure. It had wings that attached with square pegs. You can tell by the surface treatment and the coloring, more than likely the same stone. And then these round vases, vases, some kind of jug perhaps. I assume these are hollow inside. And if they are, what is the inner internal dimensions? And how? what does that imply? How did they hollow these out? What does that imply about these mater the material uh, that they worked? Is this, does that imply concrete? Does that imply they have special... Like, like with the uh, the porphyry bowls in Egypt, does that imply that they had some special 3D routing tool that could go down inside and carve all the inter internals out of this? How How is this achieved? If this is hollow inside and this is stone, how is this achieved? Or is this solid? I'd love to know. And it looked like it had handles on it, bigger handles at one point. So very interesting artifacts. And a lot. it's funny that a lot of them are still out in the field but somebody takes care of some of them. So interesting, interesting site. Lots of things going on here. I did not realize. I thought it was just some stump of rock with some blocks around it, but it's a whole complex of different things. And some of them are a little more otherworldly than I thought at first, but I'll leave that up to you guys. Some of the connections to other places. I'm really impressed. I think someone should be mentioning this. Uh, why is no one mentioning this? I'd love to hear y'all's opinion. Charles, your opinion. Wise up, your opinion. Anyone else, if you have any ideas, let me know. I'll leave all links in description. And if you want me to look at a specific photo, just tell me which gallery and which number, and we'll talk about it. Thank you guys for hanging out with me, and we will talk to you next time.